lab guy here. This is just a quick video to uh, let you know what the next series of videos might be about. I could change my mind, of course. So, uh, I've been itching to get back into mechanical television, so I'm going to be working on some ideas I have for narrowband televisions, NBTVs. These are um, Nipcow Nip disc based uh, mechanically scanned televisions using as many modern techniques as I can put into it. Believe me, if Logie Baird had these devices and techniques available, he would have used them. So, okay, um, this is the televisor I began building some time ago and it's a work in progress. This will be my base platform. Many of you are, are uh, aware of the televisor kit from the website in England. This, uh, this televisor sells for about $100 and is a self-assembled kit that is uh, made for educational purposes. I have used it for experimenting. I have two of them. Um, this is my current uh, light source. Inside there is a high intensity three color LED and my custom made driver board on the back. This works very well. It terminates in this mini DIN connector which plugs into my Aurora Designs world converter, a very expensive but necessary converter uh, for doing this kind of uh, research. It takes standard NTSC, PAL, or CCAM television and converts it to all of the obsolete mechanical standards. You'll see that in upcoming videos. I also have to go with the light source a couple of different diffuser plastics to try out to see how well each works in its own right. This one's very soft diffusing and this one is very brutal. So those are the uh, immediately on hand components that I have. Um, as far as, as this long play record based televisor, I'll turn it on so that you can see the first problems that I have to deal with. The disc is prone to aerodynamically induced fluttering uh, caused by the Bernoulli effect because it's spinning in free air. I believe that's what the problem is. I intend to stabilize it with a pair of rollers at the bottom. Something like this. Stay tuned for those innovations. So, um, I have ordered two quadcopter motors on e from eBay. On eBay. Our vernacular is something else. Um, and they are in the mail and they will be here soon. I will be building a custom driver for those. It has been suggested that I use quadcopter uh, style uh, three-phase motor drivers. Those are okay but they don't have a phase control input and they are designed more or less to run that motor as fast as it can go. They are throttleable but that will not give me the kind of control I need. They are designed to run the motors at 10,000 RPM or more, and I will be running uh, the motor at 750 RPM, which is very, very slow. I will be building my own three-phase driver for that with the frequency for driving the motor, because RPM is based on frequency times the number of poles, and the motor I'm getting, I believe, is a six-pole motor. So the 750 hertz for the rotation speed will be divided by six and that will be the AC frequency. So we're not pushing anything beyond its limits here. Uh, in fact, for quadcopter style motors, that's really slow. That's almost stepper motor speed. 
So we'll see if it's smooth enough, whether I have to generate sine waves or if I can get away with square waves. But that is the plan for the motor part. I also have uh, a video recording system in mind based on a broadcast video disc recorder that has four channels of audio. Narrowband television is audio bandwidth. So that will be recorded in the four channels of audio on the video recorder along with the fast scan video going into the um, into the scan converter. In this way I will have a high definition, well, a standard definition uh, copy of the video that will be coming out of the scan converter as narrowband television. And let it be said from the get-go, I will be building color narrowband televisions. So that is the uh, current state of the uh, project at this point. We again have, have things in the mail. So um, at the end of this video I will uh, place a series of still pictures taken uh, a year ago or more when I was working on this and uh, show you the uh, quality capabilities of a picture that is 32 lines by 48 pixels or so tall. Uh, these, are, these are portrait formatted pictures with very low resolution that is equivalent to one and a half desktop icons on your computer. And the uh, picture quality at times can be downright amazing. So if you like this video, click thumbs up. If you have friends that like this kind of video, tell them about it and click thumbs up. Don't forget to click the thumbs up. And um, if you're not subscribed, click subscribe. Click the bell if you want notifications. And uh, be sure to come back and follow the next series of videos on the Video Lab Guy channel. Until next time, Lab Guy out.